Hey y'all, what's up? Chad Wright coming to you here once again on the channel, Team Righteous. And today we have got a 2005 GSX-R1000 on the dyno, but we are not dyno tuning it. Uh, so we are going to go over today the fuel pump mod that we do uh, on the GSX-Rs, the 600s, 750s, 1000s. We do it on the Hayabusa's. We also can do it on some of the Kawasaki's as well. And I'll go over some of the ones you can do and can't do and what to look for and everything like that with there. And then I'm gonna go into detail. So yes, we've done this video kind of in the past at our old shop, but one thing, I left the banners down at the bottom that the graphics and everything, and it kind of covered up part of the video, kind of the most important parts of what you were looking for. And so I wanted to go back over it, leave that off, so no banners today. Uh, and I want to show a little bit more in detail because we are basically at step one with this right here. I haven't done anything to it other than flow the fuel pump to see that it is not, not passing the test. And so I was like, better time, what well, better time than now to do a new video and show y'all what's going on with it and how to test it, how to get everything right. So first things first, uh, this is a 2005 GSR 1000. The problem that it presents is when you're riding in the road under acceleration, the bike starts to stumble and cut up like it's running out of fuel. So we uh, brought it in. He actually said that it was cutting up and stumbling uh, closer to 10,000 RPMs, which is a little bit higher than what they normally do, but he wasn't really riding the bike that hard. So he was part throttle, which wasn't demanding as much fuel. So it didn't do it to a later RPM. But if he hold it there in that spot, it eventually shut off on him. His shut off, he would try to start the bike back up and it wouldn't start. <clears throat> and then he would start the bike back up um, and uh, shut the bike off, turn it back on, cycle the fuel pump, and the bike would start back up. The reason why is because it was filling the fuel line back up with fuel again and he was able to continue riding. So he brought it in. I was going to take it down the road, test it, see what was going on. Front tire, a little bit worn out. So I said, well, we'll just put it up on the dyno, see if I can recreate the problem that way, see if we can move some stuff around, cause the issue. I didn't think that it was the fuel pump yet. Uh, so we got it up on the dyno. Logan and I started talking and he was listening to the customer and me and him discussed it and he said, I think it may be the fuel pump. And I was just thinking, well, it's an awful high RPM for it to be the fuel pump. But I didn't realize that the guy really just wouldn't run it that hard. So that's the reason why it kind of threw me off. But I said, okay. I'll just go ahead and test fuel pump because that's the easiest one to test. That's usually what we tell everybody to do. Free test, doesn't cost anything. Super easy to do. So, we have got this far. Bike is on the dyno, so basically it's sitting on the ground, on your lift, wherever you want to work on your GSX-R1000, this is where it's at. So, before I show you that, I want to go over, though, the bikes that you can do this on. So... Uh, any bike that has an in-tank pump, so 2001 up uh, Hayabusa's, till I'm not sure on the Hayabusa's if the later years, I know they changed their fuel pump, but I don't think they changed to the style fuel pump that you can't modify. So I'm not 100% sure on, <clears throat> on the 2012's and up. Haven't worked on none of those fuel pumps. They're not that old yet, so they haven't ran into the problems yet. But this is what you're looking for here. So... Um, your 0405 Jixxer, some of the older ones as well. Your fuel pump, if it's got this sump down here that the filter sock drops down into, that's going to be the ones that you can modify. The ones that are a flat bottom, you cannot modify. So that's what you're looking for. Uh, so I'm not sure of all the years that they have these fuel pumps on them, but I'm pretty sure all the Jixxers from 2000 and up, that's going to be uh, fuel injected up until 07 on Jixxer 600 and 750s. Uh, 1000s will be through 06 and high boosts, I know for sure, through 2011. I'm pretty sure 2012 is up as well, but I'm not 100,000% certain on those. And then there's Kawasaki's as well. Um, Y'all know we've got uh a zx14 here in the shop that we're working on here um 
and it has the same style pump in it so as you can see still got that right there it's got uh, other stuff going on with the fuel hoses there though because it's a turbo bike but zx 14 is as well through certain years uh so the zx 14 come out in 06 i believe 06 07s you can maybe a couple more years after that right there uh zx 10s uh the same way basically if it's got that sump in there you're going to be able to uh do it and also some cruisers uh and these are going for suzuki's and kawasaki's i don't know if any other companies use this style pump i don't believe they do i'm pretty sure hondas are flat on the bottom and i'm pretty sure the yamahas are flat on the bottom vulcans not this vulcan this one has a flat bottom on it uh but first couple of years of this run of vulcan here whenever they had the fuel injected bikes they had the sumps in them as well and then they changed them up so for suzuki bikes that have the flat bottoms on them they sell a regulator or the part basically that's at the top so what it is there's an internal filter and i'm going to show that to you later on inside the pump and you can go through uh you can go in there and modify that on these bikes here um you can't do it on the later model bikes that have the flat bottoms suzuki sells parts for theirs kawasaki does not so with suzuki if you have um, one of the later models like the 07 and up 1000s and 08 and up 600 750s those right there you can actually buy parts for to be able to fix it and uh it's a couple hundred bucks get that get the filter stock on the bottom and you're good to go and then you just got to take it apart swap that part out put it back together these right here they did not do not sell parts for so we have a filter mod for them and that's what i'm going to show you now so first things first let's get the fuel flow test going and we're back i got my nice little uh, headlamp on here so we can see what we're doing and uh if some of y'all haven't noticed i've got a new hoodie uh the other one it, i love the hoodie it actually kept me pretty warm actually a little bit better than this right here does but it was red and red gets a lot of grease on it and so it kind of makes it a little bit hard to keep clean so anyways i think we may have some uh parts pulling up out here something like that out there let's see if fedex comes in in the middle of a video and tries to join in with us but anyways for now we're going to do this fuel flow test all right so what you do is you have your fuel hose here that goes from the pump to your fuel rail here and it delivers fuel from there to the fuel rail and goes to your injectors what's up what up big dog what's happening what's going on <laughs> what you got don't put that on youtube oh yeah you're gonna be on there world famous <laughs> world famous baddest lawn man in the world yes sir he, he's like Every a day. he's like the water boy oh yeah gatorade's <laughs> better <laughs> So coming out of here is where your fuel flows from here to here, to your fuel rail, to the injectors. And this right here is your fuel pump inside of the tank here. All this good stuff. So we have a hose here and we've got it run down to this measuring cup. Get these from the dollar store for dollar to 10 something. I don't know, price is going up, can't ever tell. Anyways, that's all you need to do the test. Sorry, we're blinding you. That's all you need to be able to do the test. So we're going to show you how to do the test now. Pretty simple. Uh, like I said, run the hose down there to your measuring cup. And the instructions say to turn the fuel pump on for 10 seconds. Flow it in there. And it should be, it says 186 milliliters, but I've come to find out that it's definitely not enough for 1000s and boosts. That number was the number they come up with back whenever 750s were the first ones to have fuel injection on them and they made like 110 horsepower. Now they make 150 horsepower, so that's not enough. Anyways, we aim for at least 250 milliliters at the bare minimum. So, but instead of doing the, turning the fuel pump on, so basically having to unplug it, plug it in a jumper to it or running wires to it and everything. Simple way to do it for everybody out there. Turn your key on. 
cycle your fuel pump three times whenever you cycle your fuel pump it will cycle for three seconds so it'll be nine seconds it's almost 10 seconds it's good enough uh, it's going to get us the number that we need if it ain't nowhere near 250 you don't have enough fuel flow so we're going to cycle the fuel pump up here and watch it fill up down here that's one cycle two cycles three cycles so as you can see we are at about 100 milliliters these pumps whenever they're good and clean and flowing will flow usually around 300 to 400 milliliters in 10 seconds as of right now we're flowing 100 in nine seconds all right so what do we do uh so this is the point where we do our fuel filter mod so this is where we modify our stock fuel filter and put on an external filter to be able to uh, to be able to bypass the internal filter that's inside the housing it's not the little sock that's at the bottom it is inside the housing i'll show you a little bit later on how we're going to do it and everything and show you where it is so you'll kind of have a better understanding of it uh, so here's what we got to do i still got to do uh the actual thing where you plug up to the pump and pump all the fuel out because it's full of fuel it's got a lot of gas in it um so we're going to get all the gas out of here that we can get out of here before we have to turn this thing upside down then we'll take the tank off of here turn the tank upside down pull the pump out of there and do the mod on it uh while we're in here he wants to do spark plugs as well so we're going to do that um so what tools do you need what parts do you need what do you need to be able to do this um i will add a list of tools and parts into the description but i will go over those now so you kind of got an idea of what we're working with there so you're going to need fuel hose 5 16 fuel hose need about two feet um you need a fuel filter so the last video we had a different fuel filter than this one right here uh this one right here is a little bit cheaper these are about five bucks at autozone it is this is the part number right here and i'll put that in the description f f three 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 zero dl get these autozone metal filter in line uh you need fuel injection hose clamps you can get these at o'reilly's and spark plugs cr9e not eix not eia or any other iridium plugs you don't need iridium plugs i know that's what's recommended by the manufacturer but it's extra money and it doesn't get you anything extra out of it you're not going to get no more horsepower out of it not going to make no more power it's not going to last you any longer i've seen iridium plugs last 7,000 miles on a bike and i've seen iridium plugs last 20,000 miles on a bike or 30,000 miles on a bike i've seen the same thing with these copper plugs they do the exact same things they just last however long they're going to last depending on the engine the style of the bike and how long they last uh you need a 3 16th drill bit to be able to drill the filter housing out and you need a phillips head screwdriver super hard to find but you need a seven millimeter wrench last video you saw i believe logan used a pair of needle nose to be able to do it and it never hurts to have some pliers here or these little nipex and a razor blade for whenever you cut the hose off of the fittings don't need this fuse this is for a different bike so anyways we're gonna get the uh fuel flowed out of here and we'll get the fuel out of the tank get it off and then we'll come back to you whenever we get ready to pull the pump out of the tank so as we're uh pumping this fuel out we've got a plug you can buy it from snits plugs up to your fuel pump and then you just run it to 12 volts on the battery the ground doesn't even need to be plugged up we got 12 volts going on there we're pumping it out he said you can get that from snits racing and 
As you can see, down inside the tank, a little rusty, but we're pumping the fuel out of here now. I'm trying to see if you can see down in there. Kind of hard to see, but uh, anyway, so you can see the pump down in there. So we've got it though. We're flowing all the fuel out of it. Going really super slow because the pump's pumping slow, but we should have it out momentarily. As soon as we get the fuel out of there, then we'll get the tank off. Uh, like I said, get it flipped upside down, get the pump out of there, and then start doing the modification on it. All right, y'all, so we got all the fuel drained out of the tank now, or pumped out of the tank. It took a little while. It was super, super slow because of the pump flowing very slowly. So anyways, we got that off of here. This is a five millimeter Allen head. Goes through here, holds your tank on the bottom. And here's the tank over here. Get ready to pull it out. So make sure you don't lose that uh, bushing that's in there because you see how open that spot up there is. That's the, where the bolt goes through there. So if you lose this right here, it'll be super sloppy on the bike. Now, of course, once it's bolted down, seats on top of it, it's not going anywhere, but you still don't want to lose it because it, uh, whenever you go to lift the tank up or whatever, it kind of moves all over the place. But anyways, we're going to get these bolts right here out. They're five millimeters well, and they're giving us a little bit of a fit. Uh, they've been in there for a long time. The bike's 18 years old, so we're going to use our impact driver and I put a Torx bit on here. So we're going to use the impact driver, Torx bit, pop all these right here, get them all to break loose. Uh, you can get these right here. Rule King around here is where we got this one at. And what it does is basically as you use it like a ratchet, as it goes on top of your screw here, and you hit it with a hammer. And when you hit it with a hammer, basically it's forced down as hard as it can. So basically like if you was pushing down as hard as you could, it hits it really hard. And then whenever it does, as soon as it gets to the bottom, it turns and loosens it at the same time. So this right here basically pushes down as hard as it can so it can't slip. And then it bites and breaks it loose at the same time, all in one big shot wave. So we're going to get to this, get these out. Hopefully we can get it out and not run into any more issues with, uh, with this pump here. Usually we don't ever run into these issues. They usually buzz right out. Uh, but sometimes you run into parts that want to be a uh, pain in the butt. All right, so we uh, got all of the screws out of there, bought them out of there, but we got them all out. Now we're going to fish this pump out of here and get it over here on our uh, card over here and then start working on the process of taking everything apart. So when you go to pull this out, we're going to be super careful. Just make sure you, when you come out, it does have a float in there, so you don't want to don't want to bend that or break it or anything like that there. So just super careful. Squeeze it here past the regulator. Trying to work it out now. All right, so we're past the regulator. Last thing in there, just a float. And there you have it. So, got the pump out. Let's put it on the cart. All right, y'all, so we're over here at our cart uh, with the fuel pump, and we're about to take it apart. So here's what you got. So on the Hayabusa's, there are three of these, and on the Jixers, there is only two. So anyways, you're going to take these two nuts off. That's the seven millimeter wrench there, and then pull this screw out here. And you got to keep up with where all these wires go. They all go a certain way. Got to take the float off of here. Take this other wire loose here, and take this screw right here loose here. So we'll take the couple of screws loose off the top, pull the float off, and then we'll pull or start with these two nuts here. So we we'll get these two nuts here, 
Then we'll pull the float off and then we'll pull the rest of it apart. So anyways, we're going to start on that now. Oh yeah. So something else I like to do is, uh, use my phone here to take pictures and keep up with the order of everything as well. So I just want to make sure that I know for sure whenever I go back and look at this or go back to put it back together, that I put all this stuff over back in the right spot. Done a few of them, but I don't 100% of the time remember the exact order everything goes in. So it never, uh, never hurts to take pictures of everything just to have a reference to go back to. All right, so got all the screws out of here and everything. Now we're going to pull this right here apart. And yes, it's going to make a mess. Gas is going to go everywhere. But we got to get this pump housing out of here. Pull these other little pieces off of here so we don't lose them. That's what holds the screws in whenever you screw these wires to everything. Get those off in a second. But I'm going to get this one off and this one off right here. Pull this thing right here apart then we'll be ready to go into modifying the filter housing so there's a sock down in the bottom down here the pump pulls the fuel up into here pushes it in through the pump housing here and the regulator here is what regulates how much fuel actually gets through or the amount of pressure that it puts on so anything over 43 psi it dumps out of here and then the rest of it goes back through here there's an internal filter inside of this right here and it goes down through here after it goes through the internal filter and comes out goes to your fuel rail all right so here we go for one of the very first fun parts is getting this all out of here and like i said there's a rubber o-ring in here that's going to be holding you back all this other stuff in here is going to be holding you back so it takes a good bit of force uh sometimes we have to pry on it as well I may go get me a screwdriver so I can pry on it to try to get it to pry up as well. And there you have it. It just comes out pretty quick. So you can see down in here, hopefully you can see it in here. There's a lot of buildup in there and everything. That's a lot of the trash and stuff that gets down in the bottom of your tank and then it tries to pick it up. So, like I said, a lot of people think that it's this filter sock here that's dirty because it gets dirty. It picks all that trash up and stuff. And they'll pull this whole thing apart, swap this thing right here out and say, oh, it was so dirty, I should be good to go. And when you do this, as soon as you put this right here back together, put it back in there, Sometimes, because it's not stopped up as bad as this one is, sometimes it will work. It'll work for maybe 30 minutes, an hour, sometimes two or three, but eventually, once it starts pushing back up in here, all that sediment and stuff that's inside of this filter, it's gonna stop it back up, and it's always gonna happen. Some of them, the Kawasaki's, I've tried them, but we don't do them no more, it's basically just a waste of time but we've tried it before just thinking maybe we could get lucky with them on those since the top part here where the filter is separate you can pull it out and try to clean it out but there's no way to do a fuel filter mod on it but we try to clean it out and back flushed it and everything else and it just does not work you're not going to get all that stuff out of there it's impossible but anyways this one right here we can so we're going to get all this right here off of here, get the pump out of here, and then we're going to uh, get to the filter housing itself here, which is the plastic piece. 
This is where your filter is inside of here. All right, let's take it back over here to the cart. All right, so back over here, going to get this pump out. Once we get the pump out of the housing here, it'll be the last thing we gotta do before, and fuel's gonna pour out of here. See more of this buildup and stuff in here. All that right there, the same thing was in the bottom of that bowl, so it may have been harder to see earlier. Now it's right here, so gonna be able to see it. But that's what the fuel pump is pushing up through there. So that filter sock didn't stop anything. As you can see, this stuff right here is pouring out already. But definitely make sure you don't lose these O-rings right here. So you got one that goes on top of here. You got one more that goes in here, which is still on the pump housing or the the bottom of plate that goes into the, that the pump housing sits down on top of. So that one's still over there. But anyways, we're going to get this O-ring out of here, put it on back onto the fuel pump. Also make sure you don't tear these either, because if it tears, you can't build up pressure. If you can't build up pressure, you're going to have basically the same issues. All right, so here you go. Um, like I said, I'm gonna clean this up really good before I really get into this, but just wanna be able to show you in here. So this right here, is what it looks like. So like I said, your pump goes inside of here and it pumps inside of here. So it pulls fuel from the bottom. It's still like this right here. It's dumping fuel right now, <laughs> but pumps fuel from the bottom in that bowl and it goes up in here through the pump. It goes into the housing and then the filter housing here, there's a filter inside of here. So that filter is inside of here and if you look inside of right here, there's a little small hole over there. So that's where your fuel comes back out at. Well, whenever it can't come through there because it's stopped up inside of there, what we do instead is we're going to drill a hole right here. So right here where this hole is on the right side, we're going to put a hole on the left side with this drill right here. And once it drills through there, it's going to allow the fuel to come out through here instead of going through the filter and then we're going to put the inline filter on the outside of the pump and filter it before it goes into the injectors so you're going to get your 3 16 drill bit you want to be sure to put it in at an angle and you want to be sure when you do this not to come through the side right here if you come through the side right here then you're going to lose your pressure it's got to be able to hold pressure. If you can't hold pressure, it's going to basically just blow all the fuel back into the tank and never build pressure, never hold pressure against the injectors and run terrible. So going to drill it right here. Like I said, hold it at an angle. Make sure you get it right. See, all the fuel now is really wanting to come back out. So, we'll clean all this up and then it'll be ready to go back together. So, what we'll do now is we will take uh, clean all this right here out, but we're going to get brake clean and everything and flow it through here and then put air pressure on here and blow it back out this side right here. So this is, like I said, this is the way it goes in. This is the way it comes out normally. So we're gonna back flush it. We're going to put brake clean on this side, come back out this side right here, and it will blow it out. We'll do that there multiple times. Then we'll start going back together with it. All right, so here we go. We're going to take this brake clean here, get all this right here cleaned up. And then Hold our thumb over the inlet from where the pump goes into the housing. Put this on the hole that we just drilled. Fill it up. Take it. Shake it up really good. 
And the first time she pour it out, there's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff come out of there. It's all brown and nasty and dirty. So we're gonna continue to do that over and over and blow it out with this right here. Until we get it to come clean. So we're gonna do that there multiple times. I'm not gonna bore you all with watching me sit here and clean this thing right here for the next 30 minutes or so. But like I said, I'm going to just continuously fill it up with brake clean, shake it up, blow it out until I get all of this out of here. And then we'll go back together the reverse way of the way we took it apart, put it all back together and be good to go. All right, so we got everything cleaned up, getting ready to put it back together. Like I said, it goes back together pretty much in the reverse order that it was took apart. But I uh, just wanted to give you a tip as well. So this is the O-ring that goes on top of the fuel pump and this is the one that goes on to the housing that bolts to the bottom of the tank goes on over here so that's easy to put on put this right here up into the housing that's easy to do up in there but the tip is get you some motor oil and put some lubricant up inside of here so whenever you go to slide the pump in there it goes in there pretty smoothly uh, you can lube the outside of it as well whenever it goes in there so be sure to lube that up there up with some oil and your o-ring whenever you get ready to slide the housing back down onto the plate here uh, this right here is where it's going to go so this right here like i said is where we drill that hole at that part right there goes on top of here so once you put your o-ring on there be sure to put some oil around that o-ring that way it just slides right down on top of that right there without tearing the o-ring so if you were to happen to roll the o-ring then you go back into what we were discussing earlier it doesn't build pressure it doesn't build pressure it's not going to run right so we got to make sure that that thing right there does not roll same uh tip i can give you if you ever do injectors if you ever take your fuel injectors out of the rail you get ready to put them back in be sure to put some oil around the o-rings themselves and be sure to put oil uh inside the fuel rail because if not you're going to roll an o-ring o-ring and you're going to be spraying fuel all up under the engine or up under the gas tank on top of the engine much worse there because it can cause a fire at least here it just doesn't run very good but anyways i'm going to uh get this right going and we'll be back to y'all once we get over here back on the bike all right so got everything back together all put together let's get it with some light there so we can see what we got going on got everything put back where it goes and just like i was saying earlier be sure to take pictures of everything make sure you know which way the wires go as i was putting them back together i wasn't sure so i reference back to my pictures i took earlier to make sure they were right and also i want to include this was the filter sock that was on it I want to be sure to replace that um if you don't happen to have one whenever you get ready to do this you can do it without doing it just do the same thing sort of like we did right here where you get ready to back flush it so since it sucks up in here just take brake clean spray it off in here and uh, you can wash all this right out make sure you try to get out as much of this dirt as possible don't blow it out with the blower though it'll probably rip the stuff right here so you don't want to do that right there just take your brake clean blow through this right here get it out the best you can if you don't happen to have one of these with you or if you can't get to a dealer and they don't have one in stock uh not something you can pick up at the parts store so um preferably use an oem one not because oem's better and everything else like it generally is but because usually the aftermarket ones whatever never fit right they're kind of made for other pumps and stuff like that there and they really don't fit them, fit on these right here the best but anyways we're about to throw it back in the tank and then we'll be back at y'all once we get on the bike so we can put in our inline filter all right so got all out there done now we're getting ready to uh put our internal filter in between the line here and you don't just cut this open and stick it in there you've actually got to replace the line with some fuel hose from the parts store like i said it's 5 16 hose so we're going to take this right here with the razor blade, split this open, get this off of here, 
and you barely just ease it open till you get these right here out. We're going to use these fittings here and then we're going to put them on the hose that's down there. Once we get out there on there, then we'll set the tank back up on the bike and put our filter in there and then cut the hose to length like we need it and she'll be good to go. And there you go, it's got one of these out. Now we're going to get the other side out and we'll start on putting the filter in with the hose and putting it back on the bike. All right, so got the tank back up on here. We've got our hoses run here. And yeah, it's a little bit long, but we're going to fix that. So now we're going to put our filter in line here. Uh, we're going to put it down here in the bottom. If you can see down in there. We'll put it down in there and we got to make sure when we do put it back in here that the hoses don't get kinked up because if the hoses get kinked up you have no fuel flow and kind of have the exact same thing happen as what we had a minute ago so anyways i'm going to get this filter put on here and before we put the filter on there and just crank it up and everything though we still got to flow this uh fuel pump out so we're going to flow this right here out make sure there's no plastic or anything else coming out of here from where we drilled this earlier and then the so we'll do that right there right before we put the filter on there and then i'll get the filter in there get it back together and we'll be ready to start this thing up so here we go we're uh, going to do a new fuel flow test here make sure how much is coming out now in 10 seconds one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and what i say this morning be right around 400 with a good pump we are at 400. looks good to me mm -hmm. all right so now we've done the flow make sure there ain't no trash in the fuel there which there's not so we'll be good to go we can put the filter on and finish it up all right, so we got everything on there, put back together. Fuel hose is definitely routed to make sure that it doesn't kink up. So it will flow fine whenever we get ready to start it. So I'm gonna do it, start it now, make sure it's gonna crank and run. And then we can't ride it down the road. I think I mentioned this earlier, but the front tires are, uh, they're down to the cord. So that's a little sketchier than anything I wanna do. I can go five second passes or whatever, but I ain't gonna go 25, 30 mile an hour with no tire like that right there. So, and he's running 60, 70 when it does it. So anyways, I'm gonna crank it up though. Make sure it's gonna crank and run. And other than that, we'll be done until we get some tires in from the customer and we can get those put on, then we'll do the test ride. But that will be after the video is already done. So anyways, let's get this thing right here started. This man right here comes back. He wants to be in the video again. He was in there this morning. Let's make sure he's back. Okay. Air bubbles. And it may misfire if something. If it, if it, I don't know what you wanted to say. Go ahead. <laughs> it may misfire. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Might have some bubbles in there. Who knows? I like bubbles. I like bubbles. We can get that freaking motor over there in tonight. That'd be a nice night. It didn't do. It didn't do nothing. Yeah. I didn't. So. It worked. Yeah. So we got it to start up and everything. As you notice, it's a little hard to start up. So it does take a little bit for it to build the fuel up into the fuel line, the fuel rail, the fuel injectors and everything because it all drains out whenever you pull out there out. So it may take a minute for it to start up. It may take a minute for it to ride normal whenever you first start riding it. They do uh, stumble for a little bit of water. It takes maybe two to three minutes or whatever. So you may have to ride it down the road for two to three minutes, two to three miles or whatever before it starts riding clear but it's not like gonna hurt anything and it's gonna be clearing up as you ride it or whatever. It's just gonna keep putting fuel through there. It's just got air bubbles in there. Sort of like you gotta bleed your brakes on your bike whenever you get air bubbles in it. Well, you gotta do the same thing with that right there, but it just bleeds itself as it's running. So anyways, we uh, got it finished up. 
and everything should be good to go like i said we'll get those tires in and other parts in or whatever we'll be able to take it for a test ride but other than that that's how you do a fuel pump mod just wanted to do an updated video keep the things off the bottom so y'all can be able to see everything and probably this is a little bit more detailed video uh we kind of had started on the bike or whatever when we've done it before this right here i thought on this right here i said i'm going to do it now before i do that so now you got to see how we do the fuel flow on it you got to see how we take everything apart put it back together step by step on everything and now we got it done so anyways appreciate it all y'all have a good one